All right, all you ex, this is DJ Rem live on Rock Addict Radio, and I have the guys from Corners of Sanctuary on the line. How you guys doing tonight? All right, all right, thanks for having us. So why don't you guys start with uh, introducing yourselves and uh, your spots in the band, and please also uh, mention anybody that's not with us tonight. Got it. Uh, Vic, you're up. Okay, I'm I'm Mick Michaels. I play guitar and I try to play some keyboard. Um, our drummer Sean Sean Nelligan, uh, he's also our, our lead vocal. He's not here tonight, but uh, he says hello. Thanks for having us on. Uh, this is James Parra. I play bass guitar and backing vocals. Okay, very cool. Do we miss anybody? No, just the three just, of us. Okay, we're just a we're a power trio. Oh, that's awesome. I just just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why don't you? Uh, what's so? Uh, I know on uh, Facebook you you had a few things you wanted to make sure you got out there, so we can start with that. We can uh, let us know what's going on with Corners of Sanctuary right now. What do you guys have lined up? Yeah, hey, James. Well, no, no, <laughs> you you got a better memory than me, man. Um. Know? We have a, we have we have a new album coming out. Um, the target date's November first. Uh, it's being released on uh, La Mezzacuta Records, and uh, we're just kind of like finalizing some some things right now. And then actually everything goes to the duplication process uh, October first. And then we have just a couple shows left. We've been playing all year, and then I think we're going to probably take off the rest of the year and just kind of plan what we're going to do for the new year. So we got some. Uh, some shows we got a show in delaware at mojo 13 on uh october 7th we go on at nine o'clock um we have two shows at the nail we have one on october 13th yeah um that's an after late, late afternoon show it's like 4 p.m there's a bunch of bands playing that day and then we're doing our own uh cd release gig and united way benefit on november 1st we're doing two shows we're doing a happy hour show at 7 30 and a 10 p.m show That'll actually be more or less the the CD release, but um, we're selling uh, tickets. They're seven bucks a piece, and a portion of the tickets go to the United Way. And if you bring your ticket the uh, night of the show, if you want to get in, uh, you also get a free uh, Corners of Sanctuary Harlequin CD. That's so you know we we've got some stuff going on. Yeah, just a look, just a couple things, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very good, very good. And it, props to you guys for doing that charity event. That's awesome, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we last year we did it um, as well. We did it with um, uh, we did an EP, uh, a Christmas EP. And we did December Wind, um, and the proceeds uh, from that also went to the United Way towards uh, cancer research because that's something that's kind of affected the three of us uh, personally. You know, with family members and friends. So it's something you know we want to just give back whenever we possibly can. Yeah. Okay. Well, very cool. So, how long has uh, Corners of Sanctuary been around? Um, we've been together since 2011, but the three of us have been jamming together on and off for probably the past 26, 27 years. So sure. since we since we were uh, since we were we we were just born. Actually, we were babies right out of the womb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the back in the spandex era. Yeah, I mean, we just it was like we're we're, we're all twenty six, twenty seven years old. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got underwear. I got underwear is older than that. But uh, but, but but corners has been together since two thousand eleven. Okay, so back in two thousand eleven, when when this started, I, what was the um, the spark that got this rolling, you guys? Uh, we were actually in a in the process of while well, we were we were knee deep into it actually the year before 2010 we had uh, all gotten together along with a couple other guys and we were doing a reunion of a band that we were in uh, 20 like we were celebrating 25 years of a band that we were in and uh, we did some new music we did some old releases it was kind of like a, um, they. Um, we had a there was a DVD done on us, kind of like you know the story of of this band and stuff like that. So that so for like about two years we were working together on and off. Um, we were all at that point we were all in different parts of the country, so we were kind of doing a lot of stuff you know via via the internet. And uh, I was you know just rapping with Sean 
and I said, hey, you want to get together? Because we, we, we lived relatively close. Um, I said, you want to get together at some point and just kind of, you know, just, just jam. Because uh, with the reunion, we didn't really have any plans of doing any uh, any shows or anything like that. It was just more or less everything on on CD or, or whatnot, internet kind of based stuff. Oh, and, uh, and and Sean and I, I think we're jamming for, I don't know, six six or seven months just to see if it, you know, if there was still something there before we even talked to James about, you know, wanting to come on board for bass. And that's kind of how it went. Okay, very cool. So, how often do you guys get together now and practice and stuff? I mean, how often are you guys uh, doing this? Well, how often do we get together and how often we, we practice our G Suite? Uh, it's uh, three, three rehearsals uh, a week. Um, depending on our, our if, if we have like a, a back-to-back on a weekend, we wouldn't do that. But um, we talk to each other obsessively. Mick has a texting addiction. <laughs> so, 6 a.m., it goes off. I'm trying to do most of my business early in the day so I can get on with the rest of my life. <laughs> and then, well, you know, uh, I mean, these guys, you can't, you can't, these guys, they don't, you know, picking up phones sometimes is difficult, um, depending on where you're at or what you're doing. So you just, you, you keep everybody, uh, you know, informed there. Um, but, I mean, we, we rehearse uh, two or three times a week, depending on the gig schedule. And um, if, 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 it's, if we got a heavy gig schedule, like we're doing a couple times a week, um, we, we won't maybe physically practice, but we'll get together and we'll re- review some tracks or we're writing some material um, or, you know, we're discussing the yeah. next takeover of the world, something like that. <laughs> or, or we're deciding which, which uh, peanut butter pie we like the best at which diner. <laughs> we... Uh... Sometimes vocals, sometimes no vocals. We've been playing it together a lot, so um, you know, if we if we if we start sucking during rehearsal, we just put it, put down the you know our instruments and go on to some studio work or whatever, and go back to them. It's uh, it's like anything else. Hey, very good. I have to tell you, um, I'm also aiming to take over the world, so you're gonna have to fight me for that one. <laughs> Okay. Right, well, okay. we, could, we could do that, you know. I mean, you're out in Michigan, so there's not much going on out there anymore. So, <laughs> dueling banjos, man, dueling banjos. <laughs> there you go. I guess you win because I can't play an instrument. So. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's all good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we we are an, a very active band. Very cool. Okay, so this next question is for each of you to answer. And I'm always curious to know uh, what kind of influences you have had and have in your life that, you know, got you into music and made you want to do something like this. Go ahead, James. Influences in life or our music influences? Musical influences. Oh, okay. Uh, the first stuff I started listening to, like, right out of the shoot was um, uh, Barracuda from Heart. Um it was my earliest re- my early my earliest memory of hard rock. My dad my dad would play it, um, but uh, probably uh, Ace Freely solo album, Double Platinum, um, it, definitely ACDC for me, um, Dirty Deeds, Highway to Hell, Back in Black. It, it was all, it was all that Deep Purple, and then as as time sort of went on was the black sabbath the judas priest um you know that classic um classic british metal type stuff um and that that's really what influenced me and then when we when we started playing early uh as as teenagers me and mick what 14 years old yeah um is when probably judas priest like is when really priest and accept and scorpions and we didn't do a lot of hair hair band stuff. I mean, well, it, it, we were we were in bands at a very young age, and we never really did it at all any hair band stuff. Uh, well, we were we we were when yeah, I mean, we were, we actually started before that whole ha- hair band era shit really kicked in and destroyed everything. But uh, yeah, Judas Priest, except you know, um, I, with me, 
um, I, I like my uh, my grandfather was a musician. He played a variety of instruments. He was um, he was also in the string bands. So like out here in in Philly, um, they have you know the Mummers on uh, New Year's Day, and and uh, he was he was one of the guys that he played banjo in a string band. So th- there was always music around. Uh, you know, he played guitar and violin and accordion. <laughs> a lot of the uh, traditional Italian <laughs> stuff. But my brother also, he played guitar. And um, so the, the, those two were like huge influence on me. I actually started when I was when I was like six. I started out on drums. I played drums for about five years. And my parents just couldn't stand it anymore. But then as I got older, I, I thought guitar was more cool. So that's, I went to guitar. And, uh, and I, I have a lot of the same influences that, that uh, James has. Um, I mean, Judas Priest, except I'm not, I'm not a big ACDC guy, but, you know, I mean, I'll listen to him for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, Dio, Sabbath, stuff like that. I mean, it's just kind of that's that's you know, that's that's the root of it. That's the root of uh, that's even the root of our of the corners of sanctuary sound, um, that old school stuff. Very nice. OK, we got everybody on that one. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. OK, good. I can't count, okay? It's okay. <laughs> okay, so how, um, so keeping this band going, you know, you, since 2011, how, has it been, um, it, it, with Corners of Sanctuary, has everything mo- moved pretty smoothly for you guys? Has it been a, a tough... Oh, fucking yeah. <laughs> All the time, every day. It's like, why, why even bother practicing? Yeah. Um, has it gone smoothly? I, I'll tell you what. It, it, you know, if you compared, if you compared how you how how you did how you you know got a band together and and tried to promote it in the '90s as opposed to the '80s, I mean things are a lot smoother now. You know, with the, with the use of the internet and how you can connect to people worldwide. Um, you know, you can you can get your flyer somewhere. You can get your music somewhere within the blink of an eye. Where you know before it took you forever to get a cassette tape to the next town, um, let alone get you know someone to listen to it. Um, so so in, now, you know, with the, with the oh, use of the internet, and how you... sorry about that. So so <laughs> so in that yeah, so in, the, in those respects, well, it's gotten smoother. Well, but I mean, you know, it's just like with anything else, you, you, you have your ups and downs, and and you're dealing with moods and attitudes, and and uh, you know, sometimes some some days it's just like why the are we still doing this? And then other days, it's like, why aren't you know? What? Why would we stop? And so it's it's, you know. But I mean, there's all there's always something. It's it's you know, a band is like a business. It's it's like a relationship or a family. I mean, you're going to have your your ups and downs. Everybody's going to get along and then not get along. Nobody gets along with James anyway, so yeah, it makes right. things ten times harder. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm a tar- I'm the tar- I'm the target of. Of things I don't even know that's fucking happening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's explain this. The target of things you don't know are happening. Here come the violins. <laughs> Here come the fucking violins. Sean, listen. It's a- Sean did not like me for 25 fucking years, and I had no idea. Now you tell me who's fucked up. <laughs> I don't know who. Well, I don't know. It must be me. I don't know. It's always you. Yeah, I mean, it's easy. <laughs> Listen, DJ Rem, it's easier for it to be me. <laughs> uh, awesome, guys. Yeah. It's all good. No, I mean, listen, um, yeah, I mean, it hasn't been smooth, relatively speaking. You know what I mean? Um, it, but it's always hard work. Yeah. You know, I mean... You know, a gig's a gig, and you're still moving stuff and 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 dealing with uh, you know club owners and weird fans, or you know, or somebody that doesn't like you, or a bad review, or you know, I mean, it's 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 like you know, it's but it's but it's all good. It's it's all worth it. I think so. It's it's a good time. It's it's uh, it's easier to get noticed in other part like right. So you're you're calling from what is I consider the Midwest, I guess. We're on your show, right? Sure. And then, uh, and then other ones are, you know, we we do radio shows from Italy and and fucking Japan and Mexico and it's just it's crazy. You know what I mean? 
So the internet really opened things up. Uh, and the flip side of that, clubbing is totally uh, different. You know, it's 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 uh, especially for the metal stuff in the Philly area. It's just unbelievable, unbelievably different. You know, five six bands in a night, headlining band. If they go on last, no one's there. It's just so strange. You're better off going on at like nine o'clock, ten o'clock, and being the second band in, than being the than, than being the fifth the fifth band in headlining. So if you're the headliner, you're screwed. That's not cool. Yeah, I mean it's it's it. Yeah, so, so one of the new the new fads around here is the headliner goes on first. Oh, okay. And I mean, and that's you know, and I mean, it's you know, we're we're it's a, it's a new system now that you know this is how you got used to it. because you know what the, the truth of the matter is nobody cares really about the clubs and the and the venues they they're not there they don't care about the bands they just need someone to fill kind of the backdrop and it's just the, you know it's about their sales and stuff like that which is all cool um, but nobody nobody um, nobody cares for the bands in a way that they that they did back in the eighties early nineties I mean it was it real the venue was about bringing in the music um, that was hot in the area um, or the region, whatever, you know, and um, and supporting that and then, you know, giving giving people um, an opportunity to come and and, you know, and listen to and, you know, listen to it and not have to pay, you know, eighty dollars a ticket or what, whatever. And, you know, and then they can they can all get together and then they can have some alcohol or whatever they have. And, and so, and so. <laughs> it's not it's not like that anymore. So, you know, that's just the way it goes, I guess. Yeah. There is, although, although um, I will say this, that uh, we play this place called the, the Rusty Nail. the hell's that? Who's, who's, who's <laughs> pranking them? What the fuck was that? <laughs> it's all right. That's what you're playing with. <laughs> That's a town, too. <laughs> what the hell was that? Just keep going, will you? You, you chewing on old rubbers again, Mike? Yeah, old rubbers. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. Um, there's there's a place called the Rusty Nail that really is a throwback. Um, it's a great little place. I mean, it's a, you can't. I mean, you're not going to get a couple hundred people in there, but who who the fuck says we do that anyway? So um, it's cool. It's a cool little place, and there's no bullshit. And you you talk directly to the manager, and you know as long as you're doing your part, they do their part. So it's all good. But. Uh, it's it's a little tougher out there with the clubs. Okay, well, I just want to throw out there that Rock Addict Radio does care about Corners of Sanctuary. Okay, just let's just be clear, we care. Okay, appreciate well, I, it. That's good. I mean, I, I, you guys probably have fucking cards and shit, you know, with our our faces on them right next to the Pope and shit, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> 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 you know, there's like Mother Teresa, the Pope. Corners of Sanctuary. Sanctuary. I think I put that Corners of Sanctuary on uh, first. Thanks very much. Oh. <laughs> the, 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 the cure to cancer is up there. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on which Pope you're talking about, right? That's true, right? Yeah, so. I don't follow any of them. So. Listen, we, we, we've definitely been on your on, on Rock Attic Radio before, and you guys have always been awesome, man. Oh, yeah. always been awesome. It's Actually, I know you have, and I've heard your interviews with uh, with the other with some of the other DJs. So yes, yeah, I'm very glad to have you on air. Get my shot. <laughs> we appreciate. It. Thank you. Definitely. Okay, Deanna in the chat. She wants to know who wrote "Angels Only Dare." Um, I, I wrote the lyrics, <laughs> and uh, and Sean and I wrote uh, the mu- you know wrote and arranged the music. And how long did that process take to write that song? Well, I mean, well, sometimes I don't. It depends. Well, uh, <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm, I don't know. I mean, a riff comes together in, in short order. It's then it's it's the the trick is is arranging, you know, piece the the, the little sections so that they actually flow together. Right. So then I, well, you know, I, I, when I I get that together and then um, I present it to Sean and. Uh, you know, with some ideas, and then and then we'll work it. And sometimes, I mean, Sean's really got his act together. He knows the instrument. He knows music. It's it's phenomenal to work with him. And he, we can we can have something sometimes together a, a rough a rough draft of a song and and a and a crappy ass recording like within an hour. Um, and then from there, 
everything it's it's just about fine tuning um usually usually the 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 writing it's something that you know when you're inspired to do it it just it all the everything comes out and then you kind of then you walk away from it and then you go back and then you kind of you you tweak it a little bit because you know sometimes the hand's going faster than the mind or the mind's going someplace else and the hand can't keep up and you go what the hell did I write here so then you got to kind of piece it all together so you know i mean a song can come together relatively quickly uh, especially if you're working with a flow and a feeling and, and, and a formula and, um, and then, but then to really kind of fine tune it, massage it, that type of thing that, that sometimes could take a few weeks, sometimes even a few months if something's, uh, you know, you're struggling with something like you have it, but it's, it's just not quite there. So the, 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 uh, the bass, the bass rhythms, the basic, I should say rhythms with guitar and drums, uh, are laid out, and then I, you know, I come in a little bit later with the bass stuff. But the the foundation of the song really is happens pretty quickly. Um, but then, you know, when you're talking about vocals and arrangement and lead, that's what that that really takes a little bit more. Um, but the foundation, I mean, the formula is pretty easy, really. And I mean, and and pl please understand that. I mean, we're in a position that because we've we've been jamming together for so many years, um, it, it, so we, we kind of sometimes understand where we're going without having to really talk about it. I mean, the three of us kind of like, you know, we 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 made our bones together um, playing out and, and and and, you know, with the old school metal and stuff like that. So we kind of because we're all from the same vein, we kind of realize you know what we're trying to accomplish in terms of that so it really does make it easier i mean i don't know if i if 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 that would be you know the same with with other people i you know i i don't know but we got kind of lucked out here and i'm and i'm very appreciative of that oh well, and that's cool i mean obviously you guys have the chemistry that works and that's definitely extremely important with the band yeah absolutely so how did you guys where did you guys come up with the name for the band corners of sanctuary where'd that come from um well, it has it actually has two meanings. Um, the first is it's a um, it's a martial arts term. Corners of sanctuary is is a position um, that you would take. Um, it's an angular position, a forty five degree angle, so to speak, um, that would actually keep you slightly out of harm's way or put you to a blind spot of your opponent. Uh, boxers use it. Um, you know. Um, you know other kickboxers that type of stuff it's it's a it's a general it's a general idea it may be uh, called different things um but that's that's the, the the one idea the the second meaning of it is a corners of sanctuary is a place that everyone each one of us goes to to uh to kind of just to meditate or or be one with ourselves or kind of just kind of uh, release ourselves from the everyday crap and stuff like that so it's a place that you could go to meditate or just think on you know ponder on things or just just a quiet time or, or something like that it could be you know listening to music it could be gardening it could be whatever but that's your <laughs> own little little corner of the world your sanctuary that you can kind of just get away from things that maybe just maybe too overwhelming at, the, at, at a point so that's it's kind of a kind of a dual meaning okay well, that's cool so how did you guys i mean how did you guys pick it though I mean, what was, you know, how did you, obviously everybody, you know, like, okay, we need to name our band. And, you know, how did, how did you pick, okay, this is what we want to name the band? Well, um, when we got, when we, when we got together, um, Sean and I, we, uh, we started, you know, after we, after we started laying some songs down, we said, oh, you know, maybe we should come up with a name. And, and uh, I think I threw out um, maybe five or six names and that was one of them. It's kind of like a name I've been, I've had you know, like a, on a list for several years, along with some other ones. And uh, I pretty much, you know, said, well, whatever name you pick, I'll, I'll be content with. So um, that's the one he picked. So, and I was pretty excited about it. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. Where... Yeah, no, 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 no real drunk story. We didn't beat anybody up or, <laughs> you, know, you know, or, you know, whatever. I don't know. That's where people hide when we fucking, when we, when we, steal them in our white van and we fucking put them in the square room. Yeah. <laughs> they pick a fucking corner. That's their corner. Yeah. <laughs> Something wrong with you, man. Yeah, you. <laughs> oh, I love we, were, we, were, we were out in the yard uh, gardening 
<laughs> we were picking petunias. Yeah. And Mike says, that's that, that's your corner. I said, no, 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 that's your corner. Don't you have the best pansies on the block? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, fucking shit all. And that was where I wish I wouldn't have asked the question. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, you know, when we're, we're all, you know, gardening together, that's what we do. That's what we do. I, I, just, I just used it as an example. You know. <laughs> okay, then. Gardening fruit. So we're, we're going to send you some flowers there, DJ Ram. Right, we'll send you a fruit basket, all right? Yeah, send you a fruit basket. Hey, I like fruit. I'm cool with that. There you go. Some bananas. No, oh, no, no. It needs to be one of those um, fruit baskets where the fruit's made into flowers and stuff. Oh. <laughs> edible. Yeah, yeah edible So you, you like the edible fruits, eh? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> we'll send you out a fucking summer squash. How about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a fruit. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh Jesus. Okay, so uh, it's a good place for for people to go to find out more about you guys. What uh, social networking and websites and stuff do you guys use? Uh, so, uh, cornersofsanctuary.com. Yeah, that's our official website. Yeah. From there, you can you can link to Facebook, Reverb Nation, Twitter, MySpace. Um iTunes, um, you can you get our YouTube channel. Um, though I think our website has a um, it has a video section, so you can see a lot of the videos that that we've done. Um, but yeah, I mean, you go right, you go to cornersofsanctuary dot com, and you, you know you'll get our our gig schedule. You'll get our you know listing of our of our catalog, and you can order from there directly. You know, off the website if you want a hard disk. Um, or you know, if you're looking for digital downloads, you can go to iTunes and some other places and T-shirts, mugs, CDs, autograph pictures of James. Yeah, if you want one, we could do that. Sure, sure. <laughs> means at least wearing clothes. Well, yeah. you know, people are lining up right now outside my house looking for autographs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but not because of the band stuff. No. <laughs> Because of your, because of having the best pansies on the block. Because of my summer squash. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, there really is, an, um, um, there is a lot of ways that to, to, if you want to learn more about us and, and listen to our stuff. Um, yeah, we're, we're 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 tight there, man. Just, just yeah, just hit the official cornersofsanctuary dot com. Okay, that's what he. You hear that, guys? That's what you need to do. And just so you guys know, too, this I'm at, I am recording this interview, and this will be up on my YouTube channel uh, later this week. So make sure you uh, help spread the word once I send that to you. Awesome. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, we, 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 uh, you, you have press right now on our Facebook page. So. so another curious question of mine is, um, so I, I don't know if this would fall true for all the tracks, but at least the, the tracks that I have so far, where did you guys record these at? Um, we, we go to a studio uh, here in Pennsylvania. Ironically, it's called Sanctuary Studios. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's, you know, and, and we're happy there. Um, and it, it works well for us. They, they, you know, we've helped, they've helped us develop some of that sound uh, and so we're, you know, we're, I mean, we're relaxed with it and, uh, that's, that's the way it goes. I mean, we did the same thing. Like once we got like back in the nineties, once we got with the studio that we were happy with or the people that were there, we, we stayed with them. We, you know, and the same, same thing we did with the, with in the eighties too. So it kind of works well like that. Not a lot of places to, um, to record like there used to be, uh, especially, you know, affordable, and um, not a lot of places that do metal. Um, do it right, that anyway. What's that? Do it right. Yeah, that do it. That even that and, and those that do it, that do it right. So I mean, we're we're happy with it, and um, but that's yeah. It's clean bathrooms as well. Very clean. Yeah, you got clean bathrooms. You can't that, be that's that. important. Very important. <laughs> yeah. Don't need to catch any diseases off the toilet. You know. No, oh, yeah, you're absolutely that's, right. No, it's a bad place to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No fun, no fun in catching it off a toilet seat. Exactly. 
So this next question is for each of you. Um, if I grabbed your your iPod or your MP3 player, did you grab what? Did you grab what? Your iPod, not your. Uh, I, I misunderstood you. <laughs> I'm not trying to grab your squash. <laughs> <laughs> but so, however you li however you listen to music, if I, if I was to to look at how you listen to music, what bands would I find you listening to right now? Um, well, I don't have an iPod. I have an iPod, sh or I have an iShuffle, or whatever the hell the fucking thing's called. I don't know. But on that thing, I got a lot of, um, like, an old Kiss, um, you know, Higher Than Hell, um, shit like that, Destroyer. Um, I, I have, there's some, like, Rat and shit like that. I think in my, uh, my vehicle, yeah. like, c CD player, I got uh, Ozzy's uh, Ultimate Sin. And I have some, I have some Wasp, uh, you know, Last Command. Uh, I got, I actually even, I, I think my first CD is Frank Sinatra. I'm actually trying to get, um, I'm trying to get my daughter to, uh, to make me a copy of her Dean Martin CD. <laughs> I believe that's illegal. No, I bought the CD. <laughs> now you make a copy of it as a backup. Thank you. <laughs> Totally legit, legit. Totally. Love yeah. it. Hey, people do it to us all the time, so fuck it, right? Yeah, really. <laughs> so who you, Jim? Who do you, James? Who do you? Is that, is that me? We got sudden silence. Then I, I thought I heard someone's feelings. Um, for what? No, not you. I, I'm wondering if Spence, uh, DJ Rem's still online. Oh, I'm right here, guys. Right. Oh, he's right there. Yeah. <laughs> they're not. They're not stealing our stuff. A no, lot of other places are stealing our shit. I, I didn't say that. No, I know. All right. Just, and you know what? If you're going to steal it, steal a good fucking copy of it. <laughs> don't steal it. Don't steal a shit copy of it. Right. And then we get then we get fucked with with. Uh, and then we get. And not only do we get bad airplay, but then we get bad reviews that we that that, that the shit <laughs> sucks. It's like what? The, I mean, if you're going to steal it, steal it right. We don't mind being told we suck about our mu music. It's the recordings that. Yeah. Well, who gives a shit, right? Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's see. I, I do have an. I, an, I got an iPhone. Um, is what I primarily write. Anyway, so this guy's big time. Uh, Apple. Apple's getting free advertising. Anyway, so uh, geez, I got. I, I have all the things that Mick just mentioned. Um, recently, I've been getting into um, some some Dio, uh, some Black Sabbath with Dio. Um, I, I've actually. Um, went really far back in the roots of rock. I've been listening to some blues stuff, so um, like Albert King, I, ha I have some of that um, that I recently downloaded over the past uh, three months. Stevie Ray Vaughan, I've been listening to that. Um, Gary Clark Jr. That's some of the blues stuff. Some of the metal stuff is, geez, I mean, it's, there's always Priest, there's always ACDC, there's always... Um, uh, Black Sabbath. There's always, you know, the. Um, I've been trying to. I've been trying to go back to some of the porcupine the, tree. Porcupine tree, which is, if uh, anyone that's listening should probably grab some of that. They're like a really progressive band. You get a little bit of Pink Floyd. Listen to Pink Floyd. You get a little bit of Pink Floyd. A little bit of kind of a little bit of, a little bit of Metallica roots in there. A little bit of Rush. It's really. It's really cool. Some of the guitar licks are Metallica, like not nothing else. Um, so yeah, I mean, as a band, I mean, Sean's influences are very much the same, but he's a lot. He's a lot into jazz. He started as a drummer when he was like four years old. Um, he listens to all genres of metal. Um, what else? I mean, he's into everything. I mean, he loves he loves Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Buddy oh, Rich, Frank Sinatra, and Dean. Yeah, I mean, I listen to. I like. Uh, I just got some vinyl. I've been getting back into the vinyl stuff, so I just bought a lot of Pavarotti stuff on uh, on vinyl. I, of course, I got back and black on vinyl. Um, I got the Wall, Dark Side of the Moon. I, I I'm really just starting to get into this, so I. You, you realize all the young metalheads right now are probably puking. They're like, "What the fuck is this shit?" So. <laughs> well, it's unfortunate if they're thinking that. <laughs> 
Well, you know what it is. You, I mean, I, I, again, if if you know if you're a musician or whatever, we try to classify ourselves as. You can't just you can't you can't lock yourself into listening to one thing. You really do have to kind of, um, you know, sample stuff. Really, I mean, your, your tastes taste change. Tastes, you know, sometimes are are uh, handed down to you. Um, and I mean, it also helps in the development of the music. So if if you're looking for a twist of what you're trying to do. Um, you know, you don't want to do the same old, same old. I mean, sometimes going into different genres or, you know, different artists, how do they do it? You know, how, what, what are they thinking? What was their process? I mean, you know, you may not be doing any, doing what they're doing, but you're taking an essence of it and you're, 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 you know, you're transplanting it into your process, which could be, you know, something really cool. Like, um, on our, our last EP that we, we did a, uh, um, we collaborated on one of the songs with um, the bass player to Trans Metal, and uh, you know, just just in a, approaching it uh, with a with a brand new musician in the in the mix, um, you know, where we were going with the riffs and stuff like that was just something different than the normal corner to sanctuary, uh, you know, method. Um, you know, we were still kind of like falling back to what we knew, but at the same time, we were we were also pushing it too, trying to get it. You know, because we knew we had a different a different uh, type of musician in in the in the in the mix at that point. So it, it was it was really cool to to learn some new things and see how they work in the studio and what their ideas on engineering are. And um, you know, even and and we we collaborated even with the lyrics. So you know, you know. Kind of comparing where we where we were going, how we were structuring um, lines and 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 things like that was was really cool. So you know, mixing it up in terms of music and what you're listening to, um, I think it's just a it's just a, an additive to uh, making you a, an all around better you know creator artist. Yeah. You know, it's funny like when when you're young, like I mean young, right? Um, like in your teenage years or whatever, you're 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 afraid, at least I was, to admit that you liked certain types of music, right? Um, whether it be, you know, opera, or whatever, the stuff that you you heard your parents or your grandparents listening to. You're almost afraid to tell your buddies that you kind of dug it. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, because they'd be ragging all over you, definitely. <laughs> right. Uh huh. Like now it's like yeah so what I I have the I have the uh, the vinyl of Saturday Night Fever whatever <laughs> that was a joke anyway so you know you, you I know, actually do thank you very much <laughs> totally serious um so I mean when you, when you get a little bit older you you stop giving a shit and then when you when you're in a band you uh, you listen to what you want to whatever makes you feel good you know whatever makes you draws out emotion you know what I mean. I totally know what you mean. I mean, you, you people that let them get sucked into genres and, and don't explore new kinds of music to me are missing out because there's so much cool music out there, and it could be it could be a country song or it could be a rap song or it could be some crazy new age instrumental, whatever it is. It doesn't matter if you if it sounds good to you. Who cares? I don't care what anybody else thinks if I like it. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Enough said on that. <laughs> James had James put it put it well. What did I say? I don't know. <laughs> I think he beat it to death with his um, squash. Uh, with his squash, that's what he did. He squashed. Yeah. squashed it. I mm -hmm. squashed it. Okay, so here's your chance to sell the band. Uh, what sets you guys apart from all the other bands out there trying to uh, you know doing gigs and doing shows? And what are the people going to get when they come see you? Me, me specifically? <laughs> no, the band. Well, you, you, the band, not your squash. <laughs> you know, here's, what, here's what you're going to get. I mean, I, I don't know. From my perspective, I, I, I mean, I, it's, that's a really hard question, right? Um, but I guess I can add, uh, my point of view on this is you're going to get um, you're going to get original music. Um, you're going to get um, you're going to get a lot of passion, a lot of effort. You're going to, 
you're not going to get like fake bullshit. You know what I mean? Uh, um, we're not going to try and sell you or whatever uh, on stage with some, you know, it's, we are straight to the point. We have strong rhythms. We have really good hooks, the great hooks. And, you know, we don't go into eight minute songs. We keep them under five. Um, you're going to get a real good classic metal band. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. Nick, I mean, how, do you, what, how would you explain this? I mean, that's pretty much it. Well, I, you're definitely going to get you're definitely going to get something that's that's uh, not what the standard is today. You're not going to get a screamo band. You're not going to get a growling band. You're actually going to get a singer who sings and sings metal. Um, you're going to get a throwback in terms of uh, an attitude how the, the the old attitude how how bands used to, when they take, took to the stage. Um, it, it was about the music, and so. You know, you're not getting us cursing back and forth and throwing the finger and spitting on stage, and we're not drinking on stage. Uh, you know, we're not carrying beers or anything like that around. It, it really is about presenting the music, um, and you're you're it, it's it's you're getting a classic sound with a with a with a new tw you know with a kind of modern twist to it. Um, but you're gonna you're gonna get that that old school attitude. It's just, it's just really straightforward and and uh, powerful. Powerful. Um, there's not a lot of really dilly dallying on the stage. Um, it's because it's it's the music really that that we're that we're there to present. Not not even not each of us individually. It's it's collectively us presenting the music, and that's that's kind of what the goal's been really since. Um, you know, with Corners of Sanctuary, but it's also kind of been our attitude, how we've always kind of uh, approached uh, our music, being in a band and, and, and getting out there and presenting it to the public. And I mean, you either like it or you don't. That's cool. Um, but that's that's kind of what you're getting. So you're not necessarily going to get, you know, I mean, we've been on on bills where, you know, there's five bands and four of them kind of sound the same. Because you know everybody's screaming and hollering and yelling, and right. they have that they have that one hook, which is fantastic. But then you don't want to hear four bands, five bands do it. And uh, like James said, we we do we do have hooks to the song. Um, again, that may be like a throwback from the old days, but it's that's what grabs you, you know. And um, it's it's that memorable um, opening rhythm. You know, like uh, you know, like something Randy Rhodes would do, or or something like that. You know, it's like it sticks in your head, and like you know that you know that fucking song. You know, holy shit, you know, and it invokes an emotion or whatever. So that's what we're trying to do. I mean, um, our our idea was to bring back, you know, what what we grew up on, what what we what we what we're rooted in, and uh, we just wanted to kind of modernize it a little bit, you know, because I mean, as as musicians, you grow, you do other things. Um, but then there's also a point where maybe you accept what you're doing or where you're at or where you came from um, and what you like. And sometimes that's that's what you want to do because you, you kind of get the, the, the biggest bang for the buck. Not necessarily from uh, a public standpoint, but from a personal standpoint. Right. You want to do what makes you happy. Right. You want to do you, you just don't want to do shit just for the sake of doing it, because it, what happens? It becomes a job. It becomes miserable and you don't want to do it anymore. So, oh. and you know, getting older, three, four minute songs, perfect. <laughs> after that, might you know, your focus goes a little shit. bit. And you got to recap. <laughs> <laughs> you just fuck. I, hey, man, I, I'll forget. You give me over five minutes, I'm like, fuck, man. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. What's the, what's the next corner I'm supposed to play? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in, in previous bands, we were um, very much progressive metal. And we have tunes right now that are shorter than our fucking intros were. You know? Yeah, it's really. <laughs> but it's good. I'm. Mean, it's all good, solid shit. You know, and you know, we we're certainly not comparing ourselves to Randy Rhodes. No, no. I, I was using it as an example. I mean, like you, you like that's you know that's something that you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, look. Here you go. Everybody know, like you know, those that have been in metal for at least the past 30 years, no fucking break in the law. And as soon as you hear that, bah, nah, 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 you know, you know exactly what it is. It's, you know, four or five fucking notes. 
you know, it's it's easy as pie, but it's the it's bad as shit. And that was the hook. I mean, it it doesn't have to be over the top complicated for people to like it. It just, you know, but that's the point. That that's what we were trying to get. That's the hook. You know, there's there's magic in that. People can relate to that. You yes. know, we said when when um when we started putting everything together, you know, and decide that we were going to, you know, actually put put it on a first CD, we said we just want to keep people's, you know, heads banging, foot stomping. And that's 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 been that's really the formula. If you can bang your head and stomp your foot, fuck, you got it. Okay, well, very good. Well, I strongly encourage everyone that uh, listening to this interview, if you know, if Corners of Sanctuary is in your area, go see them because I am sure you will get a walk away with a killer show. So, very cool, guys. Is there anything else that uh, I have not asked you tonight that you want to make sure people know about you guys? Uh. Well, we like I said, we have the the new album. It's it's scheduled to release November first. It's going to be on Lamezacuta Records. You'll be able to get it on Lamezacuta.com. You'll be able to get it on our our website, CornerSanctuary.com, iTunes. Um, we're really excited about it. We um, we we really th this, this this is a kind of an aggressive album for us. Um, so we really dug into some of the um, to the old school metal that we that we um, we dig and we try. You know, we we want to recapture that feel. Um, another thing that we wanted to do is we've been hearing that, you know, you guys are heavier live than on the albums. And, and you know, and that's kind of that that, that go, sometimes goes without saying, you know, because the live thing, there's an impact and all. So we wanted to try to achieve that a little bit more with this new new record, the new recordings. So we kind of we kind of pushed some of the recording a little bit, um, you know, kind of recorded it a little hotter than uh, than maybe what's norm just to kind of try to get more of that live feel um you know some bass drums really pump in your heart and you know kind of some cymbals in your face type of thing like like it would be live so uh we're really excited about it and um we, you know we're looking forward to its release okay well very good well i wish you guys the best of luck with that and um yeah keep uh keep rocking this keep rocking this guys i appreciate it man thank you got it so if uh just so everybody knows, it's still tuned in. We got a, still got a good uh, good house in the chat and the good listeners out there. Let you know that I got a triple shot of Corners of Sanctuary coming up when the interview is over. So I'm going to have you guys hang on the line for a minute, okay? All right, cool. Absolutely. Okay, everybody, Corners of Sanctuary, kick-ass interview. These guys rock. Huge props to them for uh, taking time out of their night. I appreciate it. And here comes, uh, we're going to start with a little Lost in a Dream right here on RockAddictRadio.com. Hey everybody, this is Mick Michaels. This is Sean Nelligan. This is James Para. And we're Corners of Sanctuary. You're listening to Rock Attic Radio. Yeah. 
Take my hand. 